Hello, and welcome back to the Nitro RX podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Timo Abistady, and I'm joined, as always, by my brilliant co-host, Nabila Teshba. How are you? I am doing really well, thank you. And how about yourself? Pretty good, thank you. And um, very much looking forward to today's episode because we've got another interview. Today, we're joined by a very special guest, Oliver Erickson, which I am very excited to have a chat with him and see kind of how his career's progressed because he's one of those that's been in the sport for a little while, but I don't really know much about him other than that, you know? No, we, we really got to fix that. So I think without any more, more uh, waiting around, we should just get straight into it. Hi, Oliver. Welcome to the podcast. First of all, how are you? I'm good. Uh, uh, just traveled to the US, been there a week, and you know, getting used to the climate again and ready to hit ice. I would say it's going to be an interesting experience there for sure, and we can't wait to, to see what that's going to be like for Nitro. Yeah, it should be good fun. Uh, also, I've seen pictures from the track. they got a good ice uh, foundation down in the track, and uh, yeah, it looks, <laughs> looks, looks good. It should be a bit of fun. But before we get all the way to Calgary, let's go back to the start with Nitro RX with you. And I want to ask, how did you first get involved with Nitro RX? Yeah, that's a good question, honestly. Um, yeah, I was uh, racing the uh, Supercar Lights back in Europe uh, after the American season. Yeah, got uh, yeah they cancelled uh, the whole series, the uh, Global Rallycross back then. I raced that for, for a long time. Uh, drove the lights, I drove supercar with Honda and so on. And then, yeah, the series crashed. So uh, Red Bull and me decided to, you know, head back to Europe, uh, learn some tracks and, and build on future there. Um, won the two world championship uh, in supercar lights and back to back, 1819. Uh, looked pretty good. I uh, also drove in uh, Relix Nordic in supercar at the same time. So you know, I, I gathered races, I gathered sea time, uh, did everything I could, raced everything I could. You know, everything I got money to race, I raced. Uh, went well. I won the Nordic Championship also eventually in Supercar. Uh, was headed for a European Championship in Supercar also in 2020 when COVID hit. But unfortunately, a couple of races in, I got yeah two races in. I had 59 out of 60 points, but then they decided to cancel the season there also. So... Yeah, I was close to being European champion. Like <laughs> no, I was, I was too bad. But you know, uh, life goes on. Uh, it was fun to race a couple of races there, and uh, yeah, I won both of them. So yeah, good fun. And then uh, yeah, obviously Nitro went on. It was on the single events in Utah. Uh, mm. Watched it closely. You know, I, I really wanted to do it every single time it it was on. So, but yeah, obviously I never quite got the foundation to do it. Uh, the fundings. Uh, money wasn't quite there so i was never able to do it and then yeah they presented the plan to go a full championship and yeah i was over the moon and yeah ready to get on it i must say just a matter of waiting and then sure enough the opportunity builds itself and then you can just take it with with both hands then yeah for sure uh, as i said i was trying to build uh, experience seed time uh, and then yeah we put everything into one basket you know and went over with uh with the fiesta uh last season uh, i i had big hopes you know uh, i thought i was fast uh thought about a good car and uh, we did a lot of improvement youth i was looking really good uh i was p2 fighting for the win but i got puncture late in the race and yeah i went backwards from there so uh let the races i i struggled quite a lot you know to get uh, back into rhythm uh always had some in the most important stages of the race, I, I managed to, yeah, screw it up. <laughs> Either puncture or mechanicals or my mistake or whatever. And, you know, with the field that was, it was super hard to get back on it. So a front row was important. And if you lost the front row, then it was, then you struggled to get good results. And yeah, that was the whole season for me. That sounds really frustrating. But having been one of the few drivers that has done multiple seasons in Nitro, how have you found the move from the old cars? I know you said you were in a Fiesta before to the Group E. Yeah, it's uh, they're quite similar in driving style. Obviously, we don't have as many gears. Uh, 
but the margin of error is a bit bigger now uh, with all supercars doing these big jumps. You know, we have the intercooler in the front. Uh, so you don't, obviously don't want to land short and gap jumps and stuff, but you, the, the margin of overshooting in a, in a supercar was quite close to you nosing. And then, yeah, your whole in, intercooler, turbo, uh, engine, everything was ruined pretty much. And with these cars, we can fly so much longer because obviously there's, yeah, there's not many parts in the front, so we can nose dive, but uh, we have much more rear arrow also so they tend to land more on the back wheel so uh, so for the jumps they are uh, yeah a lot better obviously we have more wheel travel also so we can fly crazy long so yeah it's it, they're, they're good fun that's really cool so we've actually heard um these cars like uh really really fast compared to the old ones i mean didn't Connor martel compare it to he was like oh it's like top gun maverick like we can genuinely yeah. feel that g-force have you found that like do you find that big difference or if you're saying they're kind of similar was there already that much power in the car beforehand in the supercar sorry no a supercar yeah you can't really compare the power uh supercar were quite explosive uh and you had big power in the beginning, but then it kind of leaned out. This one, like, is big power from the beginning, but it never stops giving big power. Doesn't matter if you're 100 miles per hour, yeah, power sliding through a corner, you always have that thousand horsepower to give extra. Uh, so, yeah, they, they, they're kind of nuts that way. Uh, but obviously, it's like everything. Uh, when you drive it, you get used to it and you want to improve. So, first couple of times in the car, I was like, how should we race this? Like it, it was, um, it, it was unbelievable. Like I, I, I didn't quite understand how we should fit eight cars without just going nuts and taking each other out because it was too much power to handle. Yeah. But then, yeah, you learned it. Uh, you learned how to handle the car, how to, yeah, how to fine tune everything to to your own liking. And uh, yeah, now it's now it's very handleable. Yeah, very top gun maverick. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> potentially mean question for you here then but as you've raced in both of these in both nitro and world rally cross what are your thoughts on both of them and do you have a preferred series between them uh they are way different in many ways uh obviously i'm in nitro because i like the way nitro is heading the the thought behind of what it can be uh i think that's what's rally cross should be that's uh, what it was uh, it was you know crazy stuff back when Shanke, Hansen, Jernberg, my dad uh, when those guys were driving you know they went super fast uh, through three corners and then crashed in the fourth one came back out and then went super fast for half a lap again took each other out went back on track and then yeah it was you know it should shouldn't be like anything else uh, in the motorsport market and the way yeah the world championship and most things in europe are going it's headed more towards more asphalt more one line racing and uh, yeah that's not quite what i want to see in the sport i want to see these big jumps a lot of gravel bank gravel corners with different lines unpredictable unpredictability and that's what rallycross is to me and yeah, that's where Nitro is heading. Uh, obviously, it's a lot of gravel. Uh, this season has been a lot of gravel. Uh, what I see an improvement is to go a little bit more asphalt, you know, because we've had full gravel tracks now. Uh, I want the, the, the changes in, in condition also. Uh, so you can never set up a perfect gravel car or a perfect asphalt car. You should have the mixed conditions. And so... Obviously, I, I, I like it. I like a lot of gravel. I, I come from a gravel background. So a couple of those races uh, you can keep in, like Glen Helen, uh, Minnesota, they can be in, but then you can also mix in a bit more asphalt. Because uh, so, now we now we set up the cars to to perfect gravel setup. Um, so it almost looks too easy when we drive, you know. Uh, but to get that, that mix and the, the compromise between the two it would shake things up a lot. And like you say as well, from a fan perspective, we want that unpredictability too. So it makes sense that yeah. the drivers would want that as well because it gives you an extra challenge and you're not just doing the same thing week in, week out. 
Yeah, for sure. And we, we saw that in Phoenix also. Uh, mm -hmm. Having a pole position is not always the best thing. Yeah. yeah, so you never knew when you hit the line, you never knew what grip you had, uh, what the next corner would look like. Yeah. Obviously, I was in the lead there, but the track changed so much from lap two to four that, yeah, eventually Robin passed me because, yeah, I didn't quite keep up with the, with the track conditions. I went a bit harder car, hoping the track would... Uh, keep grippy but the grip disappeared completely and he had some more more grip in his chassis and he may manage to get the pass so yeah you know it, it's kind of a guessing game uh, and unpredictability makes it fun just going off of the fact that you said the championships kind of like where you see it heading do you think things like rallycross and more closed venue events i.e racing's kind of got that covered but do you see rallying and kind of those shifts towards more closed events with everything that's happening in the space? Or do you think you can still keep Rallycross and rallying separate, if that makes sense? Because there's a lot of talk of bringing in rally sprints and how do you make rallying viable based on the fact that there's a lot of, I mean, you've got to travel really far. There's lots of distance. There's a lot of road kilometers. Do you see it? that maybe everything should be leading to that? Or do you think just keep it as it is? I never quite thought about that, to be honest. Uh, I love rallying. I love watching rallying. You know, uh, as I said, my dad was a big rally guy when when I was growing up. Uh, and they are crazy what they can do in the woods. But obviously, looking towards the, the, the car market also, it, it's starting to, yeah, to lose its uh what's it what's the what's the name uh kind of is losing its appeal because you've not got many manufacturers yeah. left yeah exactly because because they're that's not what they're looking for right now they look for close arena and obviously everything that happened with kids these days with tiktok everything it should go quick and that that was rally cross is you know it's a quick race and then another one and then another one. it's like swiping through tiktok you know um uh, whereas yeah it's the only motorsport there is now that is like that so uh, I don't see why rallycross to be honest has has not yet taken off the way it, it should have uh, but I sure hope it will soon but yeah obviously I, I like rallying and I like being out in the woods looking at it but never never actually drew, driven myself but uh, I think I think we can keep it separate as it is now uh, for us it doesn't do much I think it's more for the rally championship to try to look at what we're doing and try to get to where to what we are rather than us looking at what they're doing because I think our, our product is is more it's more towards the future and, and what 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 will happen further on yeah definitely it's always interesting because I do see rallycross as being that kind of sport that has the ability to take off massively and and has that market that can bring sponsors and more companies and everything involved in it because of the way that it's structured. But I'm now going to steer you a little bit away from that. And I want to know, so we saw you recently got engaged, engaged sorry, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to ask, how do you find traveling and balancing your personal life along with competition life? Yeah, it, it's tough, uh, to be honest. It's uh, quite really tough. Uh, yeah, my my fiance she just got a job uh, back in sweden as well so she has to stay home a bit more uh, but uh, she has uh, a really big understanding uh, she comes from racing background uh, we met in the we met in the paddock at, as uh, eight-year-old kids uh, my dad and her dad stig uh, was racing rallycross back in european championship from 2005 to 2010 i think uh, so yeah, we were eight years old the first time we met. We were best friends, you know, in paddock traveling Europe, uh, going on different races. Because back then it was it was way different. It was only a hobby level. Um, every team had their own bus, an RV bus, and the trailer behind it. That car, and it was uh, two weekends in a row. So we went to Portugal and then Spain, for example, and then in between that week, pretty much the whole paddock gathered at one camping site. And everyone like lived as uh, as friends. Uh, it was all a great community, you know. And within that, us being kids, it was me, Felicia, my fiance, Kevin Hansen, uh, Kevin, yeah, my brother, uh, 
uh, we were like a, a friend group uh, growing up. So uh, yeah, from there we were friends. We were actually when we were eleven year old, we were a couple. Yeah, uh, for a couple of months, she dumped me. <laughs> kind of hurt. <laughs> but then, yeah, uh, a couple of years later, we were yeah seven years ago. Uh, we got back to contact and yeah, we got together and now we're engaged. You didn't hold it against her too much then. <laughs> Nah, for a couple of years, you know, I, I, was, I was pissed. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? But yeah, it's all right. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, I travel a lot, obviously. Now in, in this fall, I was away, I think five months from home. Uh, I was yeah from September to December. I was yeah, not in Sweden. I was traveling everywhere, mostly in the US, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's where it is. But uh, hopefully we can. We can be more together soon. Touching on that slightly then with this next question, being as young as you are, how did you find yourself on your current career path and how did you get involved with Red Bull in particular as well as your other sponsors? It was uh, it was through the team. Uh, I got my first shot in Rallycross in 2014. Uh, it was when my dad pretty much started up the the Supercar Lights project. Uh, they ran the first season 2013. Uh, it was really successful. 10 cars. And then for 2014, he tried to let it more to the series to find drivers because he, he filled the grid for 13, but then the series would take it more for 14. Uh, but they yeah, they struggled to get drivers in. Uh, I was 15 years old. Uh, I was driving full Chris back at home. I don't know if you know what that is. The, the scrap rally cross uh, cars. Um, I, so. I was doing that a lot. Uh, it was me and my grandpa in the garage doing stuff because, yeah, my dad and, and Kevin was driving a lot back then. So we were alone in the garage back home. And then, uh, yeah, one weekend he said, yeah, I need to fill a car seat. Do you want to do you want to try it? Uh, obviously, being young, naive, <laughs> I went, oh, heck yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I could not handle the power at all it was way too much for me the first time i tried it but uh yeah i learned throughout the weekend uh first race was in new york for me uh, in grc uh, i finished fourth and then my second event was finished third uh, so it went well i got some sponsors to do a full season for 2015 uh, and then allsburg's msc was a red bull factory team uh, with two four there was john weeman and sebastian erickson driving I was in the lights category with Austin Sindrick. Uh, hmm. so it was was my full full my first uh, full season in rallycross. Uh, I managed to win the, the championship, and um, yeah, it was pretty much probably the strongest field in lights, uh, fifteen and sixteen there uh, in in America. It was it was really strong field. So uh, obviously the Red Bull bosses were around. Uh, it was Red Bull America. They were around on the races and yeah, when I managed to win it, uh, we got in contact during the off season and they wanted to, to sign me up for a, a junior program. Uh, so yeah, from there it went. Um, obviously, I, I ran the junior program. I got a lot of funding from them, ran a full Red Bull car, uh, but then yeah, the series crashed. But uh, yeah, they still want, we still wanted to do stuff together. Um, so then they moved me over to Red Bull Austria at HQ uh, with the big boss there and uh, still got fundings to do to do a lot of stuff. So uh, very thankful for everything Red Bull has given me. And uh, yeah, it's a big reason why I'm racing the racing why I'm where I am today. I'm thinking if the Nitro Rallycross is being described as Top Gun Maverick, then maybe your first experience in the car was the original Top Gun, just to keep that theme going a bit. <laughs> Um, but yeah. also very good that you had Red Bull were, were for, for backing you even after, like you say, the series folded, there was still that, that want from both sides. Because obviously you would want to keep that going because you're, you're associated with Red Bull, but it's nice that they still had that desire to, to work with you as well. And that's kept going since then. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I've always had great contact with Red Bull. Uh, and they've been really good to me, as I said. And uh, now they're doing a lot of stuff in, in the World Championship. So, yeah. It's it's kind of we're in discussion what to do still. I don't run, run a Red Bull car this year, but obviously I, I still have the helmet and everything. So mm. yeah, uh, 
it's kind of a strange situation right now, but uh, obviously, yeah, they like me and I like them, so we always keep the contact going. That's really cool. So obviously, it seems kind of like fortuitous that you would have ended up in the driving seat. But if you were not a driver or involved in any kind of motorsports, what do you think your career might have been? Oh, that's <laughs> same thing. I never, I never thought about it. You know? <laughs> this is what I'm. We're going to give an existential crisis if we're not careful, Nabila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember when I was when I was young. Uh, really young, I wanted to be uh, a plumber. Don't ask me why, but that, when I was like five, six years old, yeah, I, I was going to be a plumber. And then then I was told they unclogged the toilets <laughs> and do toilet pipes. And then I completely scrapped that idea. I you didn't. just like the sound of what a plumber was without realizing what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know where it came from. I don't know many plumbers either. So <laughs> I just, yeah. It, it, looking back at it, it's really strange. But yeah, that was my dream. So many potential titles this episode. I'm going to be spoiled when for I heard they were handling. <laughs> yeah, when I heard they were handling, yeah, human shit, then no. <laughs> that was not for me. That's so, not uh, yeah. quite the uh, career path that I expected <laughs> someone to come up no. with. That was great. Oh. I mean, I guess in your mind, you're like really thankful that motorsport ended up being <laughs> being it for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... But then I, I was, um, after that, you know, when I was started at university, I wanted to be uh, a carpenter, building houses and stuff for a while. Uh, but then... Then my motorsport path took off more and I couldn't be in school that much. And that was all different stuff. But uh, that interest I still kept alive. You know, I built my own house uh, last year also. Uh, just because why not, you know? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like using my hands, you know. Uh, I think I'm a handy man. So I have that interest. So, yeah, I built a house. Yeah, why not? Really why, not, cool. why not indeed we'll, we'll switch back to racing before we get into more trouble on, on the plumbing front um, can you yeah. describe Nitro RX for us in three words uh, yeah the first word I'd say is unpredictable as I said that, that's what I really like that's exciting Probably the most exciting motorsport there is because of the unpredictability. And yeah, the last word. <laughs> crazy, probably. Unpredictable, crazy exciting, sometimes. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely right, not wrong on any crazy. of those. Definitely very accurate. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. We haven't had a lot of fights this year, though. There's still time. To change that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, championship is closing up now, so maybe maybe it's coming now. Yeah, <laughs> big fights. So, I always like to ask. I know you said you haven't done any rallying yourself, but if you could pick any rally, and it can be a stage or the entire rally, and any rally car in the world, what are you choosing? A Swedish rally for me, hundred percent. Yeah, many says Finland, uh, awesome rally, but Swedish rally is something special, you know. Uh, being on ice, full ice. Uh, yeah. Obviously in a WRC car. Uh, I normally being a Ford guy, so I guess I have to choose the Ford Fiesta. <laughs> nice. Good choices. Yeah. 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 Swedish rally is awesome. You have to go if you have a pit. I haven't. I um, really, really wanted to go, and it was always a rally I wanted to compete on, but I just never had the chance. Yeah. Bring your boots. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> the idea of also wearing a fire suit and regular boots in a car in Sweden, just, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Like, how your feet don't go numb, I'll never know. I don't know. Do they run heat enough? Because normally they put the heaters in for that rally. I don't know if they do anymore. Maybe it's too heavy. I'm not sure. Well, the, the I don't know what they've R2 got in the new cars. Yeah, there was R2 heat in the R2. Yeah. That's what I've driven. Right. Yeah. I have no clue. There's no problem. <laughs> Let's go. 
But that's a struggle now. We don't have heaters in our cars. So oh. I remember driving on, on Relics and Ice uh, with the lights cars back in back in Sweden and Norway. Lap five, six, then it, it starts to get really cold because obviously we're in a heat of tent uh, doing the service and everything. But yeah, you can't have your foot on the pedal uh, in pre-grid because then, yeah, obviously the pedal was is some kind of uh, metal. So that that's the first thing to freeze. So your 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 toes start freezing. So you don't feel the clutch. <laughs> I think then, you're super uh, excited for Calgary and Quebec. Then that's just going to be yeah. freezing. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's great. I mean, it can get as low as what minus forty degrees in Alberta. So enjoy. I mean, it's the rest it was about a week ago. I saw it was minus thirty eight. Yes. Just the coldest be I've been. I've been on a. I've been on a test at minus 39 in Norway. That was the coldest I've been. So I tried it at least. <laughs> but it is cold. It's really yeah. cold. <laughs> kind of leads us nicely into our fire round because we've <laughs> just started doing this where we're just going to ask you some random things and you've got to pick the first one that comes to mind. So, beach or mountains? Um, mountains. Football or rugby? Football. Rally cross or F1? Rally cross. Surfing or snowboarding? Depends. Is the <laughs> water cold? It's as warm as I you hate want it cold to be. Water. I hate cold water. <laughs> if the water is warm and nice, then I go surfing. If it's cold, no chance. <laughs> I suspect I know the answer to this next question. Summer days or winter nights? <laughs> oh. I like summer days. You can do a lot. But winter nights depends on the on the on who is with you. you <laughs> You're not going stuff. surfing. I'm not going surfing if it's cold. And then last one: PC or games console? Games console. PlayStation specifically. <laughs> nice. Can't go wrong. Well, I think that's all we have time for on today's episode. But massive thank you, Oliver, for joining us. That was really fun and took us in a variety of different directions we don't usually get to go on. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, everyone, for joining us and for listening. And, yeah, if you want to go see, um, find more and see more of Oliver, I'm sure you can find him on social media. And is there anywhere else you'd like to let us know, Oliver? No, be sure to follow the races in Nitro. Uh, last three rounds coming up, so... Uh... Following Peacock and YouTube and watch us there. That was quite the chat. <laughs> I think I'm not much sure I can chat. I can say about that in, in initial reactions. Mario and Luigi. <laughs> You'd hope that you yeah, did. You think once he found out there weren't any princess to save and little turtles to bosh that he was a bit disappointed with with plumbing. <laughs> Possibly. That's just really funny because there's so many things that you like kind of put into your brain like, oh, maybe they would have gone into, yeah, construction. Do you know what? That made sense. I don't know hmm. why, but that's logical. Well, mechanics, you work with the cars, maybe you can transfer that or maybe another sport even. Maybe there's something you saw yeah. as, a, as a young kid, but, but no, no, plumbing. That was very interesting. And um, I honestly, it took me a lot to not continue laughing. Like I was really trying my best to just hold my laughter in, but... The, the professionalism is coming through. <laughs> so natural of like, yeah, no, I dreamed of being a plumber. Don't know why. <laughs> it's like you're just hearing someone tell you about their dream from last night. And I was like, yeah, I don't know why this happened. Like, that is so random. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. But great chat and um really fun to hear kind of his perspective on motorsport and also kind of go back and tell us a bit about what it was like when his dad was um racing in rallycross because god it really has changed a lot like that's super cool that they used mm. to travel around all the time and obviously it would have started out very much hobby like most of these things do but really cool that they um knew each other from such a young age and kind of kept that contact even to now and you still see all those familiar faces like the next mm. generation of people in rallycross world so that's really cool as well you see that kind of and, and you know, say that you see that not just here, but you see that in F one as well. But it's nice that we we see that more often because there's just more of a spotlight on it. But it's nice to see that there is this kind of friendship group there as well. And like you say, Kevin Hansen being in there, it's like, huh, 
wondered how long before one of you lot turned up in there. So very interesting to see. And I, again, like you say, it's nice to have that, that community and motorsport can be a very small world at times, but in this one, definitely very small world. Oh, absolutely. But I think that's all we have time for today. And it will be exciting to see what Oliver Erickson can do in the next round in Quebec. I mean, he sounds like he knows what he's doing on ice. So fingers crossed that podium comes for him. Time Even to that win. money where his mouth is. Absolutely. In the meantime, however, if you want to see more from Nabila and I, I will put all of the details for all of it in the description below. But just as a general thing, there's a couple of podcasts that I'm on. So on the Curbs and the Uncut podcast, where I talk to everyone from racing drivers to team managers. That's the On the Curbs. And then Undercut podcast, there's an IndyCar podcast on there at the moment because Formula One's on a bit of a break. Nabila, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram as well as TikTok and also on our Nitro Rallycross podcast page on Instagram. And as I said, all the details for that will be in the description below. And uh, we'll be back again soon with another episode, so keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. Until then, thank you very much for listening and watching, and we'll see you again soon.